Mr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. For your benefit, uh, the process which we will follow tonight is the first thing we're going to do is take up public hearings. And the first <coughs> public hearing will be um, nominations for the school board. Uh, at the conclusion of <coughs> public hearings, we will move to the consent agenda. And there are a couple of matters there. The council can, if it desires, to vote on both of those matters at one time. And then we will move directly to the regular agenda. There are 18 matters there, and I think we have one uh, add-on for one appointment. Uh, at the conclusion, and by the way, we will vote on all these matters in the way that they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, if any member of the public <coughs> would like to address the city council on a non-agenda item, you'll be given that opportunity. But in order to have your name called, you must have first signed a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the lobby behind the council chambers before the meeting began. All right, before we move to public hearing one, we do have one ceremonial matter. And Laurie Crouch is going to come up and introduce Florence Womax, who is the winner of the, um, the Love <coughs> Virginia photo contest win. Right. Okay. Um, Good evening, everyone. On May 14th, as you know, and I, I sent you some emails about it, we rolled out our first Love Norfolk VA Facebook photo contest. Um, in a two and a half week period of time, we received over 100 photos. Um, we had a panel of five judges whittle those photos down to 10, and um, our public voting began on June 14th, uh, excuse me, June 4th. Um, and the criteria really was composition of photo, but most importantly, interpretation of uh, the city of Norfolk and what these folks felt was a good interpretation and so I am pleased to present to you tonight Florence Womack, her friend, her brother and her parents are here um, and this is the picture that won by a vote, uh, <laughs> waterside at night with fireworks. Wow. Um, and she, this picture is right now featured on our Facebook page. Um, it will take, um, be in several of our publications and if you'd like to go ahead and stand. Hey Lori, can you show Great. it to the people in the, yeah. All right, and we have a, a gift for you. Would you. First of all, we'd love to have you say, make a comment about why you decided to enter this. And, um, and I enjoy I enjoy taking pictures as a hobby, and Waterside is a great place. It's, this is here for Fourth of July. Okay, well, you can come claim the prize. <laughs> this is, thanks very much. Hi. Thanks for coming. To Wait, did you get all the photos that, that we needed? Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, We're going to do our own. That concludes the ceremonial portion of tonight's meeting. Um, thank you for coming down. Florence, thank you, really. And we will move directly then to public hearing number one. Public hearing one <coughs> for this day to receive nominations for appointment to the Norfolk School Board. All right. Um, this is that moment in time that the city council, uh, according to state law, has uh, scheduled the public hearing to receive nominations for the city's school board. Um, there are three positions open, and um, what we'll do there it, during the, the our process has been really to receive names from uh, people who've written to us, people who've called us, as well as people who appear and have them their names placed in nomination um, tonight at the at this meeting. <clears throat> but the name has to be mentioned this evening in order for us to, to consider it in the future. <coughs> and so, the, first of all, we've had a couple people sign up for public hearing one, and I'll uh, begin by calling them. Daniel Montague. <clears throat> Daniel Montague. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Jones. My name is Dan Montague. I live at 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. Once again, I am nominating myself as a protest candidate for the school board for the simple reason is we are the last city around here to not have an elected school board. With all the stuff that's going on in the past year, I think it's about time to hold the school board accountable <coughs> to the public. If they can't run it, then they need to be changed so that we can get people in there that can run it. And this has been going on way too long. And so please 
let's have an elected school board, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Glenn Jones. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to give this to the clerk right quick. Okay. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the council, Mr. City Manager. My name is Reverend Glenn Jones, and I come to you tonight for a passion of mine I've had for some time. First, to nominate my name as a participant for the Melbourne Public School Board, meaning why I've been involved with the educational process for some time in our city. I believe that we have a good educational system. Some things need to be worked out. I'll put our kids against any kid in any city or any state. That's how I feel about our school system as our kids. Well, there are some things that need to be worked out. There's some research that need to be done. There's some things and programs that need to be added on to help our kids, especially those that are definitely, definitely in need. Our African Americans are falling short greatly. There's a need. We have kids who get up in the morning and don't want to come to school. Parents need more involvement. Definitely. There's a need. I've researched these programs. I've implemented programs for the school board and quite a few times. And I feel as though I have something to give. Not only that, I have kids involved in the school system, so I have something also that my kids can value from. I believe that once again, I believe that we have a great school system. But some things need to be worked out. And if I'm nominated, I will do my best to work along with others to research and bring research that will help out of the box thinking, because that's what we need, out of the box thinking to help our school system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there are, those are the only two folks who have signed up for public hearing one. There are um, uh, three members of the, of the school board who are eligible for reappointment. Um, one of them, by a letter today, Dr. Linda Horsey, has indicated that she does not wish to be reappointed. And um, some time ago, the um, um, Mrs. Kaufman, Suzanne Kaufman, indicated that she uh, did not wish to be reappointed. Um, but uh, Dr. Linda McClooney is eligible for reappointment, and I've not heard for, from her, so I, my assumption is that she's willing to be reappointed until we hear something differently. So, I'll, so her name should uh, go on the list to be considered. Um, I have heard from a Mr. Um, Edward Haywood, who lives uh, on Newport Avenue in Norfolk, and he would like to be considered. Um, and we have a, uh, some biographical information uh, there. Uh, we've heard Mr. Haywood uh, from Jesse Skasha, who was asked that his name be, that he be nominated for the school board. And so we'll place his name in nomination as well. Um, we have recently heard from, is it Noel? No Noel? M. Gabriel, who is an, uh, a medical doctor uh, in, uh, pe in pediatrics, I think. Oh, she's here. She's she here. Noelle. Oh, mm -hmm. oh I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, we didn't have a name here. Uh, doctor, would you like to stand up? Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you for your willingness to uh, assist us on, on the school board. I've seen you. I've had a chance to look at your resume earlier today, and it's outstanding. So we'll place your name in nomination as well. Okay, Dr. Gabriel. And then, um, uh, are there any members of the council who have any, uh, Mr. Riddick? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I had wanted to put Joseph Lindsay's name in. I think you could still do that, by the way. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Joseph Lindsay and also Rodney Jordan. Uh, all right. Um, uh, are there any other names? Because uh, the names have to come out right now if we're going to cons consider them. I have two. Okay. Uh, Karen Fox. Okay. And Simeon Fuller. Who was and the second one? Simeon Fuller. Um, okay. Uh, I have one also. Okay, sure. Um, Wendy Brodsky. Okay. Mr. Mayor, um, I have not spoken with either one of these people, but they were great candidates 
last year when we interviewed. I'm pretty sure they're probably still interested. Uh, but Martha Ambler and Matt Paddock, um, I did ask for Breck to provide a list of the names from last year. And if they're interested, I'd like to see if we can get them. <laughs> okay. Um, any other names? That's, a, that's maybe 12. Uh, Mr. Clark, would you like to read those back for us? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I have uh, Dan Montague, Glenn Jones, Dr. McClooney, Mr. Edward Hayward. Haywood. Haywood. Um, Jesse Scacia, Dr. Gabriel, Joseph Lindsay, Rodney Jordan, Kieran Fox, Simeon Fuller, Wendy Brodsky, Martha Ambler, and Matt Paddock. Okay, so how many is that all together then? You have 13. 13 names. All right, now, um, we will, the council will vote to close the nominations. Are there any other nominations that anyone would like to make? Okay, so we have 13 of them to consider. Um, then I get, the motion would be to uh, close the nomination. <coughs> Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Now, the process which the, the council has agreed on is that the, um, the clerk is going to uh, provide us with a list. We would like to have all the resumes as quickly as possible from people who have made um, uh, nominations. Um, and then the council will decide by Friday who they were going to um, uh, interview. And um, of the people who are uh, who have been nominated, of at least two council members will have to express their interest in having those people uh, interviewed. We've <coughs> we've scheduled the interviews for next uh, Tuesday, Tuesday a week from from now, and of course those interviews will be open to the public as well. Okay. Any other things that I leave out there, Breck? We got it all. Twelve o'clock noon. Twelve, 12 o'clock noon. noon. Okay, twelve o'clock noon. Right. Okay, well, that concludes public hearing number one. Then we'll move directly to public hearing number two, please. Public hearing two is scheduled for this day um, to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Kearney Stevens et al. on property located at 121 East Indian River Road. <coughs> uh, there's no one here signed up to speak on this matter, so you can, unless there's a question, you can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Kearney Stevens, Angela S. McIntosh. Felicia Nicole McIntosh, Nicholas Stevens McIntosh, and Adrian Dion McIntosh of a certain parcel of property acquired by the city pursuant to uh, the Code of Virginia and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three. Public hearing three scheduled for this day, pursuant to action of council on May 22, 2012, to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Levy Herald on property located at 874 C Avenue. All right, there's no one signed up to address the council on this matter either, so you can call the roll. We have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Levy Herald Enterprises of 5 LLC of a certain parcel of property acquired by the city pursuant to the Code of Virginia as amended and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on May 22, 2012 on the application of Edward Legum for a change in proffered conditions on property zone conditional I-1 on property located at 2301 Tidewater Drive by 7-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. And uh, Mr. Edward Legum, the applicant, is here to answer questions if there are any. Mr. Legum? Okay, well, he's, he, he indicated he would be here. And Ella Smith uh, signed up, but uh, she decided she did not want to, couldn't be present to speak, but she's in favor of the change. <coughs> all right, so that's all who signed up. And unless there are questions, you can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance to rezone property located at 2301 Tidewater Drive in order to change conditions on property zone conditional I-1. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? <coughs> Aye. Um, public hearing five, please. Public hearing five scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on May 22, 2012 
on the application of Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority for a change of zoning from R11 moderate density multiple family and open space preservation district to conditional R13 moderately high density multiple family on property located at 3101 through 3321 Kimball Terrace by 7 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Mr. Morales uh, from the Housing Authority is here to answer questions. Yeah, one, question. Uh, one question. Steve, will you want to come up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Uh, what is the difference between moderate density multiple family versus moderately high density? Um, not exactly sure with the city code, but what we're attempting to do here is uh, we're tearing down actually one eight unit building. Right. And we're looking to build back 16 units on a slightly larger site. Uh -huh. um, and they're going to be town townhouse style units. And according to working with the, the city planning department, that it was necessary for us to go ahead and make the zoning change in order to accomplish that. Where is this in proximity? Um, the if you're, office, it's swimming pool? Just that. south. This is in Grandy Village, and it's yeah. just south of the management office. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Steve. All right. All right, call the roll. I have an ordinance to rezone property located at 3101 to 3321 <coughs> Kimball Terrace from R11 and OSP to conditional R13. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? You know, I have concerns about <clears throat> the transformation of uh, Grandy Village. And, I, and in terms of, uh, I guess a few years ago, they started the market rent. And I guess my concern is that, well, I've already seen the demographics change, but with this proximity, to the uh, light rail station at Valentine Boulevard, and with features like this changing, um, I, I would imagine you know, that they're trying to attract uh, a certain income level as far as renters are concerned, people who are probably tired of riding back and forth to Virginia Beach. But um, I'm just, you know, just, you know, I'm just suspect of how they're gradually changing uh, Grandy Village. If you ride through there, as one portion of it, you don't see any children right there at uh, Ballantyne Boulevard all the way over to that uh, multi, uh, that, that great facility that they built that I hope doesn't turn into a country club. Um, you know, I, I'm going to vote no against this because I'm just very skeptical of the motives of the Housing Authority in, as it relates to Grandy Village and as how it's related to the, its proximity to uh, the light rail station. I vote no. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing <clears throat> six. Public hearing six, scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on May 22, 2012, <clears throat> on the application of the City Planning Commission to amend Chapter 25 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 to modify provisions governing adult use establishments abutting a residential zoning district. And by a 6 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. And uh, Stephanie Gilbert, are you here? Okay, that's that's fine. I just she was here to answer your other proponent and is here to answer any questions. Anybody have any? I'm just wondering if Frank could explain to what's going on. With sure, uh, Mr. Duke, will you give us some explanation? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this particular item is, is technically correcting a glitch that that we made as staff when we uh, developed the ordinance provisions. Uh, for adult use establishments in proximity to single-family residential. We had intended at the time we adopted these to, re to ensure that we were not creating nuisance problems for single-family residential, and we inadvertently used an or when we meant to use an and. And so what it meant was properties that may not be developed with single-family residential but did have single-family zoning could not apply for the later hours. Mm -hmm. And so we, we realized once we did this, we met with the city attorney's office and we realized that we were placing additional obstacles that we had never intended to place on some properties right. uh, with regard to when they would be able to seek later hours. Every property, when it comes in for the ABC establishment, will still have to go through the special exception process, so you'll be able to evaluate them on a case-by-case -case basis still. Okay. Right. All right. Call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? <clears throat> Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 
Thank you very much. That concludes the public hearings, the consent agenda. There are two matters there. Would does any member of the council want to have one, in, any one of these matters considered separately? Um, C2, please. C2, okay. C1 then, Mr. Clerk. Okay, approved C1, <coughs> Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. C2. C2 is a letter from the city manager presenting the city planning commission's recommendation on the application of Nick's Diner uh, for a general plan amendment and uh, a rezoning uh, amendment of the zoning ordinance and the recommended action is to authorize the clerk to advertise for public hearing for July 10. Right now. Yeah, and I just, um, the reason why it's separated, just um, you guys <coughs> were carbon copied on some emails from the Civic League in that area um, with opposition. It was explained to that Civic League that this really wasn't a vote um, today, which would allow them to be able to defend or speak on their case with this. Um, we've, we are asking, um, and this one actually falls in line with when it will come um, on July 10th, we're gonna try to schedule an Ocean View Task Force meeting to discuss this one and two other, um, I guess if you wanna call them controversial issues down in Ocean View dealing with um, special exceptions. Um, and I just wanted to make you aware of that, that we're gonna try to talk it out in the community. Um, I think there's some misinformation that's going around about all three of the issues, and we just wanna make sure that everybody's clear on this. Should we keep it the way it is or just? Yeah, I think it's fine. I okay. think the, okay. the issue here is not necessarily the special exception of uh, 11 to six, because you know that's just a, it's not really a bar. Um, it was mainly the, okay. with the rezoning it, because it's a residential zoning and okay. putting it back at commercial which is where most of the issue is coming from. We need to look at the general plan uh, and um, the Ocean View Corridor study a little bit better before we... Uh, okay, okay, so we'll just, we'll go ahead and advertise it for July yeah, 10th, and if we have to change it, then we, we can move it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. Approved C2. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, Mr. Smeagol used the term carbon copy. Last time, I mean, you guys heard that. <laughs> heard CC. Does anybody know what carbon copy he's means? The he's this youngest guy. He read about those. That's somewhere. Okay. Jeez. Uh, uh, R1, please. You dated yourself there, not me. <laughs> R1 um, is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an automobile repair facility on property located at 931 and 933 Pecan Point Road, and this was passed by May 22. And <coughs> Mr. Manuel Angelo Manuel is here. No comment, okay. All right, call the roll. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Yeah, I was originally concerned uh, about this because um, of what, you know, once these uh, are permitted, but uh, I looked at on the map and it's supposed to be all the work is done inside and so I'll, I'll vote aye. Uh, the Poplar Hall Civic League voted for it, but it's, you know, quite a distance from Poplar Hall's proper as such. But uh, I'll vote aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Um, I just want to thank uh, Angela for meeting with the Civic League president and, and preparing the information. Um, we were there with them um, the first Monday night of this month, or so uh, I had some concerns about it initially as well, but after um, knowing, finding out more information about what they're going to do, I vote aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2, please. An ordinance to repeal four subsections of section 25-653 and to amend and reordain sections 25-649 and 654 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add one new right turn on red prohibition and 10 new stop intersections. Uh, this was passed by at the May 22 <coughs> meeting, I think, to uh, get some information that Mr. James uh, had. Ellis, would you like to, to Ellis James, please? Are we prepared to address that tonight? I mean, yeah, yes, okay. sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Kenlake Place in the city of Norfolk. Members of the city council, Mr. City Manager, um, I thought it would be appropriate since I had expressed a concern earlier about the stop sign at the corner of Grimes, which is uh, under number three, 
of our two. I would like to commend the city manager and the administration for promptly responding to my concern and it's indicative of the kind of responses that we're getting from this administration to the citizens. And I think that's very important. I know you don't hear that from people too often up here, but the fact of the matter is that they have done a great job. And in this particular case, the fact that Alice Kelly went out to the site and took a look and discovered that there was foliage that was blocking the location, which could be a real problem, um, just shows you what a little bit of perseverance will do. And in this case, uh, Mr. City Manager, thanks again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ellis. Um, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, R3? An ordinance accepting $45,632 in grant funds from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the Juvenile Accountability Block Grant Program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds and $5,070 in local cash matching funds for the program for total program funding in the amount of $50,702. <clears throat> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Frame? Aye. R4. An ordinance contributing a sum up to $9,000 to Riverview Village Business Association for the purchase of two sets of decorative banners, appurtenances, and installation costs granting permission to the association to encroach into the Granby Street right-of-way between the Granby Street Bridge and 38th Street and approving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Uh, Mr. Nussbaum is here to answer any questions if if there is. Bill, no questions, but thanks. Okay. Go ahead. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? I can't let this go by without, obviously Bill's here and I appreciate his support, but the one that we all need to bow down to is Alice McCoy, who has more patience than Job on this. I've been on city council for six years. My entire tenure has been spent getting these banners. This has not been our finest hour, but I think we are on the road to <coughs> success and I hope this is going to give us new impetus to try to get these projects, because this is exactly what our city should be supporting. Citizens that are trying to improve their neighborhood and work hard to uh, beautify our streets. So I hope in the future this is going to no longer be the case and this is going to be the last time we have to worry about um, delays. So absolutely aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? No. I mean, aye. <laughs> <laughs> R5. An ordinance accepting and appropriating $8,000 in grant funds if and when received from the E.C. Wareheim Foundation and authorizing the city manager to employ one person in the position uh, on an intermittent part-time basis for as long as grant funds allow. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Terry, um, so does this mean I have to start now to get banners in Ocean View in six years? Oh, I think it's going to be just a nanosecond, right, Marcus? <laughs> uh, yes. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6? R6 is an ordinance to amend and reordain Section 25-286.1 of the City Code revise the application process, clarify decal issuance procedures, and include issuance of decals to in-home caregivers in the parking permit districts, and the request is to withdraw this matter, Mr. President. All right. Okay. Motion is to withdraw. Good. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance permitting Marta and Don Joyner to encroach three feet eight inches into a City of Norfolk drainage easement west of 249 Huntsman Road with a portion of a pier. <clears throat> okay. 
Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or eight. An ordinance approving the release to Ann C.B. Wentz or her successors and assigns of that variable with drainage and utility easement extending along the southeast corner of Lot A subdivision of Lots 15 through 19, Block 3, Lock Haven, as shown on the plat entitled Subdivision of Lots 15 through 19, Block 3, Lock Haven, property of American Boulevard Corporation and property shown on physical survey of part of Lot 1, the Lock Haven Corporation, and part of Lot 5, Lock Haven, and part of St. Francis Lane, a closed lane at 7445 North Shore Drive and authorizing the city manager to execute a deed of release. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or nine. An ordinance accepting a $4,000 dollar-wise summer youth campaign grant award from the United States Conference of Mayors for the City of Norfolk's 2012 Norfolk Emerging Leaders Program appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds and authorizing the expenditure of $4,000 in a local cash match for the program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 10. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 2475 East Little Creek Road. A 5-1 vote. Any commission recommends approval. And Mr. Myers, are you here? Joe, Joe Myers is here to answer any questions if we have any. And he's here for 10A as well. All right, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 10A. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a gas station sales only on property located at 2475 East Little Creek Road. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? <coughs> Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 11. An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an automobile storage facility on property located at 312 to 320 East 18th Street by 6 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Robin Thomas is here to answer any questions if you have any. Yeah, I have a couple questions. Yeah. Oh, Robin, will you come forward, please? Hi. Hi. Okay. Will these um, vehicles be able to be seen from the street? This is right, it looks like it's right across the street from the new HRT office uh, administrative, but not administrative building, but their uh, <coughs> bus garage. And I'm familiar with the location. Will the vehicles be able to be seen from the street, or will you have some type of uh, shrubbery or something to block the view of them? Yes, we're um, uh, going to be placing uh, shrubs uh, along the entire uh, street frontage, okay. um, including the 25 feet of closed street that Miss um, Lee owns, and um, the whole the entire fenced area right. from the driveway. Yeah. Uh, going uh, do they operate anywhere else in the region, or is this their first? No, I think you're, they're operating in uh, Chesapeake right now. Yeah, he's in Chesapeake, Chesapeake. and uh, okay. yes, the okay. young fellow's with me. His name is Gino Lee, and okay. uh, he has a contract with several banks and things to recover uh, automobiles. That, okay. uh, All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. All right. Call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. <coughs> Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Our 12th. An ordinance repealing sections 2 523 through 529 of the Norfolk City Code concerning the Norfolk Community Services Board and amending and reordaining Chapter 2.1 of the Code so as to add a new section and article concerning general city employment and the Norfolk Community Services Board. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance repealing all prior ordinances concerning a special grievance procedure for some employees of the Norfolk Community Services Board and determining their eligibility to use the city grievance procedures. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance to amend and reordain the Norfolk City Code 1979 is amended to add one new subsection G to section 37-74 so as to provide that Norfolk Community Services Board employees 
who are Norfolk Community Services Board employees on June 30, 2012, and who become city employees on July 1, 2012, shall have their prior service with Norfolk Community Services Board counted toward the five-year retirement system vesting requirement under Norfolk City Code Section 37-74C without this service being deemed creditable service in the city's retirement system. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or be R16? R15. 15. 15. R15. An ordinance to amend and reordain the Norfolk City Code 1979 is amended to add one new subsection J to section 37-103.1 so as to exempt Norfolk Community Services Board employees who were, who were Community Services Board employees on June 30, 2012 and who become city employees on July 1, 2012 from the members' mandatory contributions to the retirement system required by City Code section 37-103.1A. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R16. An ordinance consenting to the assignment and assumption of some of the contractual obligations of the Norfolk Community Services Board and accepting ownership of its personal property. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right, it's all yours now, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Okay. R17. An ordinance to amend and reordain Section 2 of Ordinance Number 44244 so as to appropriate and authorize the expenditure of funds in the additional amount of $800,000 from increased participation and reimbursement for the Child Nutrition Services Program for Norfolk Public Schools. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R18. R18 is an ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment <coughs> property located at 241 Granby Street, and this matter has been requested to be withdrawn. Mr. Okay. Motions to withdraw then, okay. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. You have one additional item, Mr. President, numbered R19, and it is a resolution appointing a member and an alternate the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Mr. Frame? Aye. Call him as president. Thank you. That concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda. Thank you.